So a little bit about high technology. Um, we've now been in business for, uh, for 28 years, um, starting in 1992, founded by uh, Ian Martin. Uh, at that time, selling just the Sheffield range of CMMs, um, which has since grown to all of the hexagon uh, metrology um, product portfolio. Um, so in 1996, uh, four years later, we gained market leadership for CMM sales in Australia, and that's a position that we still uh, enjoy today, 28 years later. So our mission is to provide world-class metrology solutions and the best support services behind them. Uh, so a little history about all of the products that we now have, 28 years down the track, obviously CMMs, uh, but we also do vision systems, uh, portable metrology, which has been a, been a big thing over the last 10 years, as you're possibly all well aware of. Uh, you see plenty of customers here with a few different systems, uh, laser trackers, handheld scanning, uh, surface and form and horizontal and height measurement. Uh, obviously software, which we're going to show you one of them today at PC Demus, uh, but we also do polyworks for your laser scanning and portable stuff, as well as uh, VX elements for portable creoform scanning. Uh, motion tracking, which is pretty cool, and uh, digital hand tools. Um, uh, the directors of the company hate me saying this, but effectively we're the, the one-stop shop of all things measurement, so to speak. So let's, let's introduce our presenter. Uh, Prasanna has been with us since uh, September of, uh, of last year, uh, which seems to have flown by. Um, he started at uh, Schneider Electric, uh, where he worked as an assistant manager in metrology, uh, starting back in 2005, uh, where he worked on a different range of mostly CMMs, but also anything uh, metrology related uh, in the lab that he worked at there, um, and made the move to hexagon metrology um, in 2012 where he was for seven years as a senior technical consultant and principal expert um, his level of expertise particularly was was in programming so um, he actually assisted in certain elements of the programming of pc demos um, specifically with uh the, with gdnt in mind uh, is probably the biggest uh, level of expertise that prasana has um, and we had the opportunity for Prasanna to come and migrate over to Australia from Singapore uh, back in September 2019 and uh, we welcome that opportunity with open arms. Okay, let's have a look at some of the new features. So the first thing you'll notice in PCMS 2020 is a new homepage. Um, it's a lot nicely, more, a lot neater in the setup um, and you basically, uh, able to jump in and be productive and discover new features uh, and provide it also provides access to useful links for the wider community. So the advantages of the new homepage setup, um, you can easily see recent files and favourites, making it quicker to get started. Uh, you have the ability to change thumbnails so you can have a little preview of the uh, program that you're picking in case you can't remember what you named it. Uh, but probably my favourite part of it is access to videos, news and pre-written sample programs so that you can continue to learn through the homepage. Uh, Prasanna will show you a little bit about that in a second. It supports routine creation from templates. Um, so any of you that have come from a CAD background, for example, you know what all that's about. But it really makes the setup of any brand new program a lot smoother and simpler. Here's the basic setup and the features that uh, Prasanna is about to take us through. Um, and as you can see up in the top right corner, you can get uh, information about the latest product and news updates, um, shortcuts to the support forum, um, and the PCDMS Idea Center. Um, so please have a listen to that when Prasanna talks about it. It's basically collecting information from you, the customer, to say, I like this suggestion, why don't we try and um, implement this into the new version of PC Demos and the developers are at the other end listening to it. Okay, so I'll hand over to you, Prasanna. And let's have a look at the new screen. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, I hope uh, everyone sees my screen.
Okay, so this is the home page of uh, PCDMA's 2020 R2. And also it is similar to R1. Uh, the thing is, uh, and you see uh, uh, default, uh, a dark uh, color background and it looks nice and initiative. And what you would be seeing here is uh, uh, the home page, which contains the recent programs that you have opened. And you have the ability to uh, load the picture of the part for that particular part program. This may be the CAD image, the 2D drawing, and it can be of anything. So that, so you no need to go and craze with the name and then look for the program. You just come see the picture and bang, the program opens. Okay, and then if you go to the new tab here, and it contains a lot of new stuff as well, like you can have ability to save a template. The template is something uh, which I would come to uh, uh, show you uh, during the later stages of programming. So basically it is a master sheet where uh, you can put some details and then open at any time uh, you want. And then if you go to the recent tab, the recent tab contains the recent programs that you have opened. And then the favorite contains some of the favorites. Basically you would be working on a few programs on a day-to-day -day basis and then you can make those as a favorite. If you go to the open uh, and you could get to access all the uh, key PCDMEs folders uh, without having to go to the uh, explorer. And then if you go to the discover here and then you would see a lot of nice videos on the new enhancements uh, of PCDMEs. So just for example, I just want to open this one. Uh, uh, and then this is the new uh, concept which is introduced in the CMMs uh, uh, last month or so uh, from Hexagon. And this is independent of uh, any controllers and it is mostly PCDMAs and inspect control. So let's have a look at it and then uh, uh, see what it does. Okay, so when I click this from the PCDMAs homepage, it goes here and this is ID. ID stands for identification, alignment, and measurement. Okay, this is the interface. And what this does, before I run this video, just want to give an example on what this does. Basically, uh, you as a C CMM programmers, I uh, know, you know, so once you place a part in the machine, you have to do the manual alignment, right? so that the machine knows uh, where the part is sitting and then uh, it picks up that alignment and then it runs the program. So with the help of ID, uh, you are basically eliminating that step. So the ID captures the image of the part and then it has a intelligent uh, uh, algorithm built inside uh, uh, of the interface, which communicates with PCDMAs. It sees the image and then it calls alignment. And then what you would be doing is just place the part and bang, and then you can go and do your work. So that's what you'll be seeing in this video. Okay, so that's what uh, the PCDMIS homepage offers. Uh, if you want to learn about any new features, basically you can go to the homepage and then you can just bang. You, you must have an internet connection to do this. Uh, and then uh, during your free time or when you feel bored with the programming, it has a lot of resources uh, uh, to play with. And then the next tab is basically the example routines. The example routines are basically the sample PCDMIS programs. 
Uh, for example, if you want to know how to create a tangent point in PCDMS, uh, of course, you can load this template in your, uh, if you just put this button, it goes to your uh, directory where the PCDMS is installed, and then you can just go and open the program, and then you can see what it contains, and also it contains instruction sheet. So basically, there are a lot of resources in the homepage. So apart from this, uh, if you go here, so you can see what's new in the software, and then you can visit the PCDMS forum. And this is one of my favorite. Basically, if you got a suggestion, you can just bang there, and then this takes you to the idea center of uh, uh, Hexagon's PCDMS. So basically, what this contains is a list of ideas posted by many PCDMS users across the world. And if I see here, uh, there are close to 300 or 400 different ideas which are already uh, uh, running in the library. Uh, and then you see here, the user is looking for a graphical visualization of an angle and distance dimension. And this user has posted the idea here in the idea center, and this is actively under review. And this has been ordered by 47 customers. So that means uh, most customers like to have this capability introduced in PCDMIS. Uh, when an idea gets more work, and then it goes to the development. So what you can uh, do is basically you have to come and register with your email ID and company ID, and then basically you, are, uh, you can do post your idea. And then if you click here, and you can see basically what this idea contains. And then this user has loaded a video, how he wants that particular feature to be, and that gives an idea to the developers how the things should work. Uh, and then there are some other users which comes here, they put their comments and blah, 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 and that's how the things go. So if you see here, this particular idea has close to 15 uh, or 1600 views and 47 odds, and I think this is going into 2021 20, or two, okay? So as a user, you, you can uh, uh, voice out, and then when it is beneficial to most of the customer, this development team is very active to put this in the uh, uh, software. So like I had put a couple of ideas and that has been there in the software already. Uh, and of course, uh, I don't have a time to show that uh, for the moment. And I just want to tell you, and this is where you can uh, open your suggestion. Okay. Going back to the homepage of PCDMIS, uh, and then you can see the newsletter of PCDMS. Each quarter, uh, uh, PCDMS software team releases a, a newsletter which basically contains uh, uh, some of the tips and tricks and that can be accessed from this place. Okay. Back to home page, and then I will hand over uh, uh, back to Paul. Paul? Thank you, Prasanna. Yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, I really like the uh, the idea center and uh, it enables customers to sort of stay in contact with the, the greater PCDMS community around the world um, and really gives you a direct line to the developers too. So um, the example routines and the idea center for mine are probably my favorite functions in there. Okay, let's move on. There's a bit of a lag in my thing here. Okay, uh, this is probably my favorite new feature um, in the new versions of PCDMS, uh, optical character recognition. So it basically enables you to create measurement routines uh, using uh, blueprints or, or drawings. So connecting the 2D print to the 3D model simply and efficiently. Uh, so probably the biggest advantage it has is uh, if you've ever come across a GD and T item on a drawing um, and you're a little bit unsure of it, um, basically pull the PDF, draw a circle around it, populate PCDMS, job done. Um, so you can create measurement routines from user-selected dimensions from a print. It saves, uh, obviously saves time, uh, effort, and it minimizes errors. Okay, so this feature uh, we're very proud of, PCDMS is very proud of. It's an industry world's first from Hexagon Manufacturing um, and it's been extremely well taken by the, the, the world community. Okay, let's see it in action, Prasanna. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is uh, how to bring the 2D print inside of PCDMS and then map the uh, callouts uh, back to the CAD model. 
Okay, so now I open the uh, empty program and it contains the CAD model, uh, basically the hexagon demo block. And then what you would see in the 2020 R1 or R2 uh, is basically in the graphic modes toolbar. And then this is the one which I mean, this is the graphic mode. And then you would see this function. So this function is basically the OCR which follows this thread. So this is GDNT selection from the file. So what this does basically in the 2019 R1 and 2020 R1, it has the ability to pass the GDNT callouts individually. And in 2020 R2, they made it so nice. So let me explain what they did. So if you click this button and then of course you can load the print. Okay, and then what it does is basically pass uh, the print data and then it brings it basically inside of PC Dimis. And then you can see uh, how much percentage it's done and then how many pages it's done. Okay, so now the print is inside PC Dimis. As soon as the print is inside PC Dimis, okay, so you would see this marker uh, sitting over the GDNT callouts. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to map the GDNT callout back to the CAD model here, okay? So let me go to this example. And in this example, there is a flatness 0.1, and there is a perpendicularity with respect to a datum, so which is what I'm going to take for an example. And ideally, this is very efficient with the help of two monitors. So right now, I'm just going to put this one in the corner, the 2D drawing in the corner, and this is my CAD model. If you see the graphic display window, as soon as I click the flatness, so you see here, I'm clicking basically in the 2D, and then PCDMIS knows this callout is basically flatness. So since this CAD model doesn't have a PMI, so what I have to do is just I have to use the quick feature gesture of PCDMIS and then just reference the feature. And then once I say next and then tolerance definition completed. And you would see here, basically the feature is created and the dimension is created all with a single click, okay? So then, Next thing, for an example, I would take this perpendicularity, okay? So uh, if you see from the 2D model, so it has a datum E here and PC Dimis can read from 2D. So that's the uh, uh, entire uh, idea of this function. And then it knows it has datum E. So it asked me to just map the datum E in the CAD model. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, so uh, I'm just going to map the datum E, which is basically the cylinder out here, again, using the quick feature gesture and then the auto risk dialog comes in and then I accept that and then bang. So now you see it asked me to select the perpendicularity features and the perpendicularity feature is basically this one. And auto, auto risk automatically turns the probe. I say, okay, and then I accept, bang. So now you see here, I have my plane flatness and then the feature cylinder two and the perpendicularity is called here. So all within the matter of a few clicks. Okay, and then if I go to the next page, so I'm going to show a magic here, uh, just bear with me. So if you see here, and this has a position control, if I just put this drawing in the full screen, basically this is a position control, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, composite, ADB, and there's a material condition and it is for eight holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refer this function to OCR, and then it tells me this particular callout needs a datum A, again, the data A is the plane which I already measured here. Bang, I just hit the ID. I don't need to remeasure or I don't need to re-reference the CAD model. As soon as I hit the ID, it knows it has a plane there. And then the plane is referenced back to data A. And then the data D here. So shift, data D, and then auto feature, accept. Bang, data feature B. You see here, this is a coplanar surface. And uh, if you know PC Dimis has a quick feature gesture to to, to select a coplanar plane. So basically when you put a shift and then drag your mouse across and you see here, you can select two planes in a single click. And the auto risk accept it. Okay, so now datum B is done and it knows this callout has eight features for a position. So what I'm going to do, multi-select with features and another function, which is introduced in 2019 R1. If you have a holes of a same diameter, you can also select that with a single click. You just select a plane, bang. 
and then you see eight holes uh, within a single click. Okay, all the position is selected, and then it says tolerance definition completed. Bang, close. Okay, if you see here, within a matter of few minutes, you could be able to create a program, and then if you refer your alignment before this, and then if you have a clearance cube or auto insert mouse enable, you are ready to put this program in a CMF. So that's what OCR does. So what I did is basically I was passing a single feature and then if you want to pass a full page itself, there is an option to process the whole page. When you click the process the whole page, whatever the OCR which was already passed, it is automatically marked in green. As you see here, we already did this, it is marked in green automatically. And then it says you have to do a perpendicularity uh, uh, for this particular plane, which is basically datum B with respect to datum A. So what I'm going to do here, I have my datum B plane here, and then the perpendicularities for the datum B come here, bang, datum B. Select a total definition completed. And this is what the OZR does. And then I can go on and on, something like this. And for the moment, I just want to, sh I just want to stop. And then want to queue uh, uh, back uh, to Paul. Okay, so let me close this. And what you see here is the program is done. And then come here, enable a DCC mode, and then go back to put auto insert mode. And then the auto insert mode comes up and you see here with the nice colors, all the features are selected, these are customizable. And you see a new, new auto insert mode, which is basically out of a legacy uh, uh, function. And this is known as a preview function of an auto insert, which is sent, again introduced in 2019 R1 with the new algorithm. And then you can, you have ability to select all features or selected, uh, select a few features. And you have an ability to define a bounding box for an auto insert mode, and you can give a solution time. This is all a new algorithm, which is basically in work here. Now, once you say, okay, and then what you would see here in the toolbar, the auto insert mode is doing its job. Okay, so now it is passing. So it would take uh, a few seconds and then auto insert move is completed. And what you would see here is basically the move points. You see in the summary window, all the move points are enabled. Now this program is ready to be executed in a CMM after a collision check, which is the process which you would be knowing already. Okay. So at this point of time, I want to hand over, hand over back to Paul. Uh, and this function uh, basically works very well for GDNT and many of our customers are already uh, using it. So because if you go and see in a user forum, there is a customer who has a 15 page print who used to take more than two days uh, to just see the print and put the features and put a dimension. Uh, he can just do that in four hours uh, because all these things are uh, 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 simplified with the help of the OCR. For example, if I open a command mode uh, and then if I say, if I go to an edit function, you'll see here automatically the data me is called, the perpendicularity is put, the size dimension is called from the 2D print and everything is done. So the OCR function is clever and smart enough to read from the 2D print. And what you have to do is you have to just, if you have a CAD model, you have to just map the surface, that's it. And OCR takes care of the remaining. Paul, you can take over. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so as you can see, it takes uh, GDNT and uh, and part programming uh, in general uh, to a new level of uh, simplicity. Um, as Prasanna showed, you can either uh, pick uh, your GDNT items off your PDF file one at a time, or just do the whole lot. Um, so particularly good for composite dimensions, um, those little confusing suckers that pop up from time to time, um, and. Um, selecting uh, multiple features. I uh, don't know if you noticed on that pattern of holes that Prasanna saw there that had a true position. It said eight features and automatically identified that there are eight features. Um, that's one pretty cool feature. Okay, um, I, know I can see a few customers here um, but that uh, are already using uh, PMI. So the idea of this is that all of your GD and T callouts will be within the 3D CAD model. Um, we've been talking about this for some time. It actually has been around for some time too in PC Um But I guess the idea is that uh, we'll go to the paperless society where we'll have uh, all of the information on the 3D model. Um, 
but uh, it just seems to, uh, to never quite get there. So um, with the introduction of things like uh, OCR, which is you can select your GDNT items off a PDF, um, well, it's kind of getting paperless really. Uh, but in an ideal world, you'd be using PMI. Um, the CAD designer will put all the GDNT callouts and datums into the CAD model, and you'll pull them out and populate your PCDMS program based on what's inside the 3D model. Let's have a look at that, Prasanna. Over to you. Okay. Uh, what, what I did a few minutes before is basically a reading from the 2D drawing, uh, which is basically uh, not the ultimate thing, and but it does uh, help the users uh, who does have a GDNT in their 2D print, but there is no GDNT in a CAD model. So we can categorize something like this. So some customers, they do have a PMI in the CAD model, and some customers have a GDNT in a 2D print, uh, but the concept of PMI is not uh, uh, known to many or because of the operational feasibility, it is not uh, easy to do a PMI in the CAD model. So that's where uh, the concept of programming uh, uh, with the PMI gets difficult and the OCR helps. The OCR is basically the optical character recognition, uh, which I forget to tell at first place uh, during the uh, uh, last demo. Uh, but that's what uh, uh, we had uh, seen in the last few minutes, uh, reading from the 2D CAD. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to save this uh, program, exit this, and then I'm just going to create a new routine and then I'm going to show you the programming with the PMI. Okay, so now I have a new PCDMS template or a program and I'm just going to import a CAD model here. And this CAD model is uh, basically a CAD model, which is basically an NX part with a PMI embedded into it. Okay, so I'm just importing the model now. You see, as soon as uh, the callout uh, uh, knows that uh, uh, it has a PMI embedded, PCDMIS will give you this message. It can be able to identify 17 GDNT callouts in this model. And then it tells me, do you want to create the commands for the 17 GDNT callouts? I would say yes in a normal scenario, so, but for the moment I would say no, so that I can explain what happens. <coughs> okay, so what you see here is basically the PMI. PMI is product manufacturing information. Uh, this can be of uh, information on the CAD model or a material type or in general the GDNT. So it can be of anything. So uh, in this case, we are going to talk about a GDNT PMI. Okay, so what you are seeing here is basically the two callouts uh, which are directly embedded in the CAD. So in this case, we are proposing the concept of uh, paperless drawing or the company wants to do the paperless inspection. Okay, so that's where uh, uh, the concept of PMI uh, programming comes into picture. So what I can do now is uh, if you create a PMI in your 3D CAD model, for example, in an NX or in a CATIA or a, a SOLIDWORKS or any graphics, so basically we can bring in uh, we can bring in the PMI from any of these native CAD softwares. So it's not uh, limited to uh, one CAD CAD platform. So and then if I see here, <coughs> friend. So these are basically done by the designers. The designer has embedded three PMI in the front view. <coughs> and then two in the side view. And then probably three to four in the top view. And then two more in the right hand, right hand view, okay? So there are close to 17 GDNT callouts here. So with the help of these GDNT callouts, I don't need to refer a drawing. So what I can do is, there is an option in PCDMIS. So if you remember last time I selected from file, which is basically an OCR, and this one is basically from CAD. So this is nothing but 
uh, doing the programming from the PMI of the CAD model. So once I enable this button, <coughs> excuse me, and then you see here, I could highlight the uh, PMI. Now once I highlight the PMI, bang, and you see here, uh, it knows uh, the datum ABC is there in this call out, and then it has a position <laughs> tolerance with a tolerance of 0.4 material condition, and there are close to eight cylinders out here uh, with the size tolerance of 0.25 and minus 0.15. So all these things are basically read by PCDMS, and then it has created a program, uh, it is creating the program uh, in the edit window. So this makes life so easy, right? So in case if you have a 2D model, you have to go and then you have to see what is datum A and what is datum B and what is datum C. And in case of uh, 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 programming with the PMI, just with the matter of few clicks, so you could create a program. Okay, so once the program is created, <coughs> see, I didn't do any definition for ABC. It just reads a PMI and it knows this is the order and it does captures all the PMI detail. Once I say, okay, here, the program is done. Ultimate, okay? So the OCR is the one which helps you in case if you are a designer cannot put a PMI in a CAD model, of course you can do it from the 2D, 2D uh, PDF. And if you have uh, PMI information, then that's the uh, uh, best thing uh, to happen. And uh, the industry, some of the industries are moving towards this side. Uh, so that there is no confusion exists between a manufacturing or a quality or a designer uh, so that uh, you just follow the design intent uh, whatever your designer is intended for so after this so it's all you can call a alignment in alignment before this and then you can insert a mo and then you are good to go okay so there are multiple things that this can do so of course there are a lot of functions in pmi so this itself would be a separate training topic uh, if you ask me there are a lot of functions inside of pcdms but i just want to give an essence of what it does <coughs> so what happens is uh, there are some cad models where uh, the leader line won't be sitting exactly in this surface so basically in those cases that though the designer has to repair it is um, difficult to call the designer and then uh, get him to do certain things so in those cases so you can associate a CAD elements basically for example in case if the leader line is in the air so you can basically uh, correct it without having to depend on the design okay so you can basically delete the element add the element basically some kind of uh, uh, design stuff you can do it inside of PCDMS but not all because PCDMS is not a design software okay so I'm just uh, because I just want to uh, show you we do have a repair functions inside of PCDMS to take care of the uh, necessary things right so and apart from that if you go to the GDNT information here <coughs> so you can select all GDNT uh, and then create a program and then you can select a GDNT only in a view and create a program and if there is any invalid GDNT is there of course I have seen many drawings where the GDNT is not uh, uh, meeting the standard criteria uh, and then if there is an invalid GDNT and you'll be seeing the invalid GDNT colors here so this this by default means a checkpoint for your CAD model so if uh, PCDMS identifies uh, non-standard GDNT or a GDNT it can't recognize or if it is a mistake it would populate it here and you can tell your designer hey boss there is something wrong here then you have to go and correct this one and this unselected GDNT is basically you know there are 17 GDNT out here and I have selected one and there are close to 16 which are not selected so it makes the life so easy there are a lot of features here <clears throat> but I hope that you understood uh, the essence of having a PMI in the CAD model. Uh, uh, that's what I want to show uh, in this particular demo. Paul, back to you. Okay, thank you, Prasanna. Uh, that's great. So I just want to recap on those on those couple of features with the PMI and OCR. OCR, uh, or what we call GeoToll as well, just to really confuse everybody. Um, you can basically populate uh, populate your part program um, from features that are, that are already existing, either in a PDF file or in, or in your 3D CAD model. Um, I can see a group of customers here that, uh, that uh, actually do the, the PMI, the 3D CAD model uh, stuff quite well, actually. So uh, with, with OCR, I guess, with those two op uh, options, it really is taking us into the into the paperless world that we've been talking about for the last uh, thirty odd years. Okay, let's move on. All 
Okay, MSC, Measurement Strategy Editor. Okay, so the user can now define which feature parameters are available when using the feature widget. Um, you might have seen the feature widget pop up as Prasanna was going through the last couple of presentations. So you'll take, take a little bit more time to explain what's going on there. Um, this allows uh, important parameters to be set uh, at, at the creation time using GD and T selection and quick features. The feature creation process is streamlined, allowing faster creation. Okay, let's have a look yep. at Prasanna. Okay, so I want to continue uh, in the same program. So if you uh, recap what we did before, we had a PMI and then we just called, uh, uh, <coughs> we just uh, did a, a call out uh, with the position tolerance and all good. What I'm going to show you is another feature uh, which is introduced of course in 2019 R1, uh, but uh, had its run through in the last two versions and it has come back good with 2020 R2. <coughs> Just me. So if you go to edit preferences here, and then you see this function, basically the measurement strategy editor. And this is the one which uh, Paul has showed in the PPT. And then, so what this function basically does is, basically you can create a multiple groups for a different feature types. For example, let's imagine your company A, or uh, your company uses a different kinds of parts. Uh, uh, maybe a machining part, or maybe a plastic part, or maybe a sheet metal part. So depends on the, uh, type of the part or depends on the strategy of measurement. You can you can choose the number of hits that is required uh, for a circle, just for an example. Of course, you can do this for all features. Let me go to an example of this circle, okay? You see here, <coughs> in case of a circle, uh, I do have a circular moves enabled, no. I'm going to make it yes. And then I'm going to make it available to the widget and then if you see here, the number of hits is seven, so which is odd hits. I don't. I want to make this six, okay? And once I say this save, okay, and this is saved in this group known as IQP02. So this can be of any name, like a plastic part, or maybe a machining part, or maybe uh, some XYZ part, or whatever it is. Uh, so what happens now uh, is uh, I had uh, changed the number of hits, and then I had put the circular moves. And after the save, uh, I made this as a default. I close it. So let's assume I'm going to do the programming now. And my mode should be in a DCC. Uh, and after the DCC mode, I come here and then let me, let me pick a circle out here. Just for example, what you would see here, and you would see this quick widget pops up. The quick widget is basically in the toolbar without you having to go to the auto feature, you can adjust basically the properties down the line directly in PCDMS itself. I mean, while you're creating the program itself, okay? So what happens now, uh, uh, I had uh, given the number of hits to eight, I would say here six, and then the depth is one, and then once I apply this one, and then you would see here, without having to go to the toolbar function, like an auto feature on the fly, you can adjust uh, 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 the parameters of the feature uh, with the help of the widget, okay? So then coming back to MSC, okay? So what MSC does, if you have a, a, a function like, uh, uh, like for example, a circle, you can have a different parameters, right? So you can have a, a analog probe, or if you have a touch trigger probe, so you can have a different types of probe in your, uh, in your rack. And then you have a different types of uh, uh, strategies uh, based on the feature. For example, let's go to a circle. And in case of a circle, you can have an adaptive circle scan. You can all set this as a default. Okay, you can all set this as a default so that when you create a feature here, you no need to go and change each and every time. Either you can change on the fly like I did before, or you can make it as a group and then you can save it and then you can call back the features. So that's what the MSE does. So just for example, I just want to go back to IQP1. This is basically a other group. So in this particular group, if you see uh, the circular moves is enabled, and then if you see the number of hits is four, and then I save it. And then this is part of a more DCC and my analog probe type, uh, uh, sensor type should be analog probe. And once I close this, and then once I come here, I enable this. And then once you go here, 
and then you have on the fly change the number of hits because you would see the parameter for changing the number of hits here because I have enabled it. And then once I put the acceptance here and it gets uh, populated with the number of hits here. Okay, so that's what. So you can do uh, uh, the strategy definition for any feature type. Uh, not only for a circle, for a point, or for a line, or for a plane, uh, uh, for anything. And then you can just recall, and then you can continue with the program. Paul, back to you. Okay, thanks, Prasanna. Um, I think in regards to the uh, to the uh, measurement strategy editor, a good example there is that. Uh, if you have uh, machined parts um, and say, for example, you know, you'd like to measure circles, um, as long as the machine, as long as the parts machined reasonably well, four, four points on a circle is generally good enough. Um, but if you're using different materials where there might be some question as to the roundness of the circle, um, then you might uh, want to take six points just to double check that. So a good strategy might be to have different material types, Prasanna sort of touched on earlier, so that um, when you're going into your program, you don't have to go and um, change all of those. Uh, I really like the quick widget there too, because uh, let's face it, for the vast majority of things that you change on the fly like that, it's usually a number of points in depth. Um, and I think that's a really handy function. Okay, uh, 1D width. Um, so there's uh, a couple of customers that I can see uh, as part of the group here that have uh, actually utilized this themselves and uh, got really nice feedback from them. So we thought we'd actually include it into the, into the presentation. But it basically enables you to uh, create a, a slot feature um, with uh, uh, GDNT, maximum material condition, but just by the use of uh, single points. Um, traditionally, on such a feature, you would have to you know, build lines um, and uh, there was a, a lot more clicking involved, uh, something that uh, now you can do with a couple of clicks of a mouse. Let's have a look at uh, how that works, Prasanna. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, just I'm going to clear this a uh, little bit so that it's easy for you to see what's going to happen here. Okay, so before I start a uh, 1D with feature, I want to give an introduction on uh, GeoTOL, okay? So for that, I'm going to use the Google platform so that, uh, if you see here, you, you would have heard about ASME 14. 5.1 2018 okay asme 14.y 14.5.1 uh, is basically the new math definition for gdnt uh, asme is basically the senate's committee that defines the math for the gdnt and they define the standard and they release the standard like this uh, dimensioning and tolerancing but uh, you know whatever it is you can just google and see in the net and then uh, Basically, I do work for a committee for some time, uh, and what they do is uh, uh, they take, uh, there are a lot of people sitting in the committee, and then uh, there are a lot of ideas that would be floating, and this committee basically defines the standard for a GDNT, okay? And once the standard is defined for a GDNT, there is also a math committee, which defines the mathematics behind the GDNT. So that's what ASME 14.5.1 does. So it basically, it is a math definition for a GDNT. So according to uh, the committee, uh, the width feature can be a datum. For example, if, we have, if you have a two opposed planes or a two opposed lines or two opposed points, so those can be termed as features of size, FOS. And once you term, the, term, term those as a feature of size, obviously you can call those as a datums and you can assign a material condition for those. So what uh, PCDMIS does here, it has introduced the support uh, uh, for uh, those features back in 2019 R1. Uh, if you go here, if you go to constructed bit, so previously uh, PC, PCDMIS used to support a plane and line. 3D is for a plane and 2D is for a line. And 1D is basically a point. For example, if you can't measure a line in a place, uh, but you can measure a point, and to a post point can still define a size feature. So this is uh, additional stuff that has been added in PCDMIS. To demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, 
let me make a point here. Just for example, let me make a point uh, this side. Let me make a point on this side. Okay, so now I have two points, point one and two. And then if I go to a constructed bit, I, I, obviously this is a 1D bit, it's not a line. So I just choose these two points. Once I choose these two points, so basically this is an outer bit, it's not an inner bit. Then I can create a bit feature. So once I create a bit feature here, and then I can uh, uh, define some datum, uh, some kind of a datum name for it. Okay, and you see here, this is now constructed as a feature. This is no more to individual points. This is basically a feature, okay? So obviously the good practice here is to take two planes. Imagine a, places, imagine a place where you can't measure a plane or a line. If you want to measure only a point, of course you can do it now with the help of a 1D bit. So if I construct these two points as a feature and as a bit, if I go back to my uh, dimension dialog, like a position, uh, for example, here I go to position uh, and then I can choose probably a circle uh, and the material condition and then I can put my datum A, datum B and then uh, the last datum uh, is with datum C. Uh, to define the datum, I have to go here. Uh, okay, so okay, so I need to define a datum basically for a width. So let me define the datum. And the datum name, let me give some special name like W. And then I would uh, width datum C. Now I'm defining this as a datum. I say here, okay. And then go back to position again. Uh, choose a feature, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I can choose. Uh, with datum C, okay. So the with datum C, ideally it is a secondary datum feature. It cannot be a territory one, uh, or basically it has to be parallel to the circle. So let me fine tune that, uh, okay. So what happens now, but the essence of the idea here is, uh, you see here, this basically uh, uh, constrains the translation, okay? The translation degree of freedom, because this is a point. And then if I constrain, uh, uh, the degrees of freedom with the point, I can constrain only the translation modifier following one of the axes. So you can't define this as a primary datum and PC Dimes is smart enough to let me know, you can't define this as a primary datum, but I, what I want to show you is, once you create this as a width, uh, you can assign a material condition here, which you can't do with two points and creating a midpoint. I hope you got, get my point, okay? So that is the reason PC Dimis has introduced this function. Uh, and I know some customers use this uh, uh, along with uh, plane and line. Uh, they also start uh, using uh, the width feature and it can be assigned only as a territory datum, okay? It cannot be a primary datum. It can be assigned only as a territory datum. Okay, back to you, Paul. Okay, very nice. Thanks, Prasanna. Okay, uh, PCDMS inspects slideshow. Um, so the idea of this is um, for the programmer to create an interface that allows as many people as possible to use the CMM in the workplace. Um, if you think basically like an, an icon-driven uh, layout, um, and in an ideal world previously, but not necessary, uh, we've had customers walk up to a touch screen. Um, they can see a list of, of parts and or descriptions. Uh, they click on that. Uh, they put, obviously have the part put into the machine and they can be different parts. Um, and the machine whizzes away, runs the measurement, and gives quick uh, and simple feedback to the operator. Um, a couple of important things to point out here. Um, uh, any version uh, of PCDMS uh, and Quindos uh, can be tied with inspect. Um, it's probably a little bit of a loose statement. Um, obviously, it only goes back so far, but even previous versions to, to PCMS 2020 uh, have this function. Um, and it comes um, free of cost uh, when you install recent versions of PCDMS. Oh, 
Okay, so that's uh, something what it looks like. Um, and the advantage over um, existing methods, simple, uh, modern shop floor interface. Um, as I said, think sort of a, a mobile app, if you like, on your computer screen. Um, and no need to manually change measurement routines. They're all there in front of the operator. Um, and everyone uh, gets a chance to run uh, inspections of the parts. Um, it kind of ties into the next topic as well, um, which uh, talks about uh, PCDMS Protect V2. Obviously, if you're going to get as many people as you can using the CMM, um, and uh, most customers uh, do try and do that, um, it's important that um, you can have. Um, uh, a separation between your advanced uh, programmers, um, uh, your supervisors, who also probably need a, another a different level of, of accessibility as well, um, and then uh, the basic level users uh, who don't want to misclick and ruin anything for, for themselves or anyone else. So we're going to have a look at both of these things, um, and I'll flick it back over to you, Prasanna. Okay, so uh, what, what you are seeing here is not PCDMS uh, in my screen. This is basically the inspect user interface. Okay, so the inspect is a modern user interface. Uh, uh, what you would see here is basically the list of part programs that are done in PCDMS. Of course, this is not PCDMS. This is a separate installation or it gets installed with PCDMS by default uh, when you ask to do so. Okay, this is a freeware. I mean, uh, it's not a paid option and this comes along with PCDMS and it is nice for uh, the user environment where there are three to four different users using the CMM. And one user can be an administrator and inspect doesn't allow the program to be modified or editor, edited. For example, the user can log into PCDMS, can make a program and the user who logs into inspect cannot modify the program. He can just execute and then he can just view the report. So that's what inspect offers, yeah, uh, operator lock. Uh, that, is one, that is just one of the functions of the inspect, though it, though it offers a lot of things, that is the main thing. And then what, I, what I'm going to show you now is uh, uh, just for an example, I'm going to uh, run a program. Uh, for example, this is the program which I'm going to run. And what you would see here is, the, let me assume uh, me as an operator who just walks into the shop floor and then I open the inspect or the screen is already open and then I just hit the button, that's it. That's what I would be doing. I won't be doing any kind of an editing. And then it gives me an information uh, on what is happening in the program. You see here, the user can see the PCDM screen here. Of course, he can graphically view. And then uh, once, uh, once the program is done, he, he sees how many dimensions pass and how many dimensions fail. And he can see the report of PCDMS from here itself without having to log into PCDMS. And then uh, these are the different features of Inspect. And he can see the summary of what is happening in the Inspect. And then of course, like I said, he can see the uh, screen uh, of uh, PCDMS CAD view. Of course, he can see the execution percentage and once everything is done, you can say done. So let me do this again, it's very fast. So once I bang this, and then if you go to the measurement view, you can see the time, less than one minute remaining for this part program. And if there is a manual alignment, the manual alignment can be done from inspect as well. So whatever the message that PCDM is prompts, you can be able to control, accept, reject, take the hits through the inspect. So that's the only thing that the operator can do. It's a kind of unlock, right? Okay. The additional thing which is introduced in 2020, it's a fantastic function. The function is known as a pallet function. For example, just have a look at this. Uh, of course, there are videos uh, in a PCDMS forum and then in a PCDMS uh, homepage. You can have a, a detailed look on what the pallet does. But what I'm, what I'm going to show you is, imagine that you have two to three parts uh, you want to execute it uh, in an order in a CMM without a without any manual intervention. You can get that done through the palette. You see here, let's imagine, uh, let me go back uh, to the main view. So I'm going to execute the palette program, my CAD view. If you see palette view, I have nine parts here and I just press the button one time for execution. I can execute nine parts in a sequence without having to intervene manually. Okay, all the logic is done by the palette for the looping and for the alignment offset. This can be a different parts or the same parts. 
And this is a function which is introduced in 2020 R2 in a couple of weeks. And we call this function as a palette function. You can directly see here, out of nine parts, 18% execution is done. And once each part is completed, you can see uh, the part is okay or not okay directly in the screen. And the third part is running now. And then once the third part is done, go to four and goes up to nine. And you can see the report of all the part directly in the inspect itself. So once this is done, I'll be showing you the report. So it's a very nice uh, uh, enhancement that has been introduced with inspect. Uh, okay, so this is the one thing. And then uh, to run through, uh, Okay, so you see here, it's now generating the report and the cat view, and you see part one is done and the part two is done. You can just see this image is automatically offsetting the feature. Okay, so on the part five, so part four is done. Now it's coming to part five. It is impressive, isn't it? Because you no need to write a logic. You just set a palette. How to do a setup? So I don't have a time to show now. Of course, uh, it's it's a kind of a train. It, it just won't take more than ten minutes to do it. Uh, it has a lot of inbuilt options. You just set it up. Just bang a button and then go for a coffee, and you can come back after one hour, and then you see the programs are done. If the part is rejected, obviously you would see a red color mark uh, uh, in that particular palette. Basically, instead of green, you would see a red here. If the part is uh, in a border, you would see a yellow color here. So a lot of stuff uh, uh, can be configured in this palette option. Again, it is part of an inspect and it is not a separate software. Okay, the last part is running. And I'm happy that it's going to finish. All the nine parts are done now. So, and it says the execution is completed. And once you say done, and then if you go to the reports, and then you can see the results of all the nine parts here. Okay. So that's what that's what uh, uh, the inspect with palette can do. I'm handing over back to Paul. Okay. Thank you, sir. Very nice. So uh, we uh, get a little bit of a flavour there of uh, PCDMS uh, 2020 R2. Uh, okay, uh, Excel form reports, uh, Excel um, uh, reporting. Um, uh, this has been a common question uh, popping up over, over the last year or so, especially from customers um, talking about uh, templates um, and specifically uh, templates in relation to AS9102 uh, uh, for the uh, multiple aerospace customers uh, that are out there in our region. Um, so uh, PCDMS has uh, sort of taken it to the next level for 2020 um, as far as uh, templates for Excel reporting is concerned. Um, and let's have a look at how that kind of works. Um, so it supports uh, multiple worksheets uh, in one form and the user can fill up the header information using values from PCDMS and they talk directly. Um, the PCDID um, has a unique identification string. Um, all dimensions can be used to fill up the data area and the user can choose to send all dimensions to form or just select dimensions. Um, the custom field um, gives you the ability, of course, to then go and modify the template to suit your own flavour. 
Um, and uh, as time goes on, the uh, template types uh, are for, for ever evolving as well. So um, in R2, there's, there's uh, even more to come. Let's have a look at, uh, at those, Prasanna. Yep, thanks, Paul. Okay, so uh, so what I'm going to show now uh, is an uh, uh, Excel form report. For this, I need to close and inspect. So you close here. I just keep this purposefully on so that you can see uh, this as a separate uh, user interface. You can just close the inspect here. And once I inspect, it's closed. So we can go back and all the PCDMS reports which are stored before close. I can just launch uh, PCDMS as usual. Okay, so now I'm in PCDMS. Uh, we, last time, I think we forget to uh, discuss uh, about a topic. The topic is about a PCDMS product. Uh, it won't take more than a couple of minutes to see what product does. And then in this case, uh, it's a nice video uh, uh, related to this function. It is especially important for a defense and medical companies. This function has been built. Okay, so I got the feedback that the uh, video can't be heard. So let me explain. Uh, uh, let me explain uh, what it does. It's basically a kind of uh, restricted user control, which many companies are asking. For example, if you have uh, if you have a CAD engineer and if you have a manufacturing engineer who are giving you feedback on the different types of tolerances and design changes. So basically, Protect will help you in creating a flawless program without you having uh, overlooked uh, into some of the aspects uh, uh, in the design. Uh, basically, it can help you to lock the program. And with the help of the Protect Viewer, which I'm going to show here, uh, if, you, if you see my screen, I'm just going to show this uh, product viewer. So what this product viewer does, in case uh, 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 if uh, uh, you created a program as a programmer and you can submit this program for approval to your supervisor or to a quality manager, okay? So once a program is supplied, uh, uh, once submitted for an approval and uh, they can see what changes had been made in that program, from the time of approval. And imagine for the last five years, if they want to see the changes, or you want to see the changes for the uh, next the next five years in that part program after the initial approval phase. You can see the entire list with the date, time, the person who modified, or uh, what modification has been done, and why it has been done, everything with the help of the product viewer. The product viewer can be controlled by the administrator, and the programmer can be able to submit it, and if you want a report of uh, the list of changes, you can be able to print it, okay? So that's what, uh, uh, that's what uh, uh, the essence of uh, product. And this comes as a license. And then if uh, one of you want to, want to play with the product, you can let us know, and then we can get you uh, the free license, and then you can have a feel of it, okay? So considering the time aspect, so this requires uh, changing between the multiple user levels, uh, which I'm not going to demo. I just want to talk about it. And then of course you can see the video from the PCDMS homepage. And if you want a free license of product, we are here to help you. Okay, so let me take over the Excel form report, which is our last uh, 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 function for a demo. So, and for that, I can go back to PCDMS and then, um, let me open an existing program. Uh, 
Okay, so this program contains a geotol command. The, the geotol command is basically a, a feature control frame command which has been modified as a geotol because the reason what I said is uh, you know the math change, the math standard has changed, so the format of the command has changed, and the new mathematics has been introduced into GDNT and PCDMS has adapted those GDNT and then it moved from exact measure to geotol. Okay, if you see here, you will see a nice new look and interface. And so you can see an option to introduce a tangent plane, which is a option in the new standard. And then um, there are a lot of functionalities. I mean, which we can talk about it uh, uh, in a separate session. And then uh, there are a lot of different math types and there are uh, uh, list squares and maximum constraint, L2 elements, a lot of things that happened in a geotol, which is a separate session. So in this uh, particular demo, I'm going to introduce you to the Excel form report. Uh, this Excel form report can be inserted from report command. And then, and you see here, there is this beautiful report, okay? So in 2020 R2, it has taken a new turn. Uh, and people who use this function in 2019 R1 and 2020 R1, obviously they know it has a five part study. And now there, there is a template known as extended five part study and uh, row wise and then 10 part study column wise, okay? And apart from that, so what they did is, if you see this uh, particular form report, the Excel sheet uh, also contains average range, max min. So all sort of things what the metrology inspector would require. Okay, so these are the default or a fixed templates that are available inside of the CDMs. And you can choose to introduce uh, your own template or you can choose to call uh, any one of these templates. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to, uh, and of course, you can drag and drop an additional fields from here. And of course, uh, you can do a lot of options uh, as well in this particular uh, column. If you go to a data and you can restrict what data goes out to the report and what data stays inside the report. So it automatically filters the data. I hear data column. And then if you want to report all, you can report all. Or if you want to report out of tolerance, you can report only out of tolerance. Intolerance, intolerance. For the moment, I keep it all 10 part study. And then I would just say, uh, there is no time so that the report happens in the same format. And then once it is done, I want the report to be showed and I'm going to save this report in this particular folder. I say, okay, and then I say create. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that the report is stored in the folder. Okay. Then I'm going to see in my desktop. So, okay, so all good. I'm deleting my old reports so that it is easy for me to find when the execution is complete. So now I'm going to execute this program. Okay, what do you see here? Once the program execution is done and it has showed you the report, okay? And then the report is waiting for your approval. And automatically, pulled the dimensions from the part program and nicely populated in a pre-formatted Excel sheet. And it can store up to 10 data as a default. Or if you want to store 30 data, just insert the columns. Uh, just you have to play with an Excel, insert the columns. And then if you want to add a CPCPK, you can do anything you want. What this does, it basically pulls out all the necessary data, formatted it, uh, formats it, and then puts it in a nice, nice uh, uh, shape and then you are all good to go, okay? So what I'm going to do now, let's do a second execution. And you see the results of the second execution gets up into the second two rows. So that's what the Excel form report is doing. Uh, uh, I'll be handing over uh, back to Paul. Okay. Uh Thanks, Prasanna. Um, Thank you, let's be honest, it's, uh, it's great to see a little bit of um, uh, extra work uh, from PCNM has put into um, updating some of the Excel templates. Uh, we've all been waiting for a long time, uh, but yeah, they look great. Uh, 